The older it gets, the wiser it gets. If that statement's true, then that little book we call the Bible has got a lot of wisdom, isn't it? Written over a thousand years ago. And today, those readings are still relevant to us as well. Tonight, they remind us as Christians our responsibility. Our responsibility to reach out to those non-faithful people who have walked away from the church. We have a responsibility for them. In fact, a rather young, intelligent woman who I'll call Lydia strayed from the church when she was a teenager. She went to experiment with different religions. She tried atheism, she tried Scientology, and she even tried New Age. And some 20 years later, she found her way back to the church by the grace of God. Thank God. But asked what hurt her the most when she was away from the church, Lydia responded that no one in the church missed her. No one called her. No one asked where she was. No one said, are you okay? Nothing from the church. She said it was almost as if the church didn't want her. Wow. The church didn't want her. No, God wants everyone. He wants everyone. But what are we doing to help those men and women, no matter what age they are, who have walked away from the church? What are we doing? In fact, today's reading invites us to review our I don't care attitude. They're rather demanding these readings that we hear today. And they're asking us to ask ourselves, what are we doing? What are we doing? And some might say, why should it be our business whether someone else decides to serve God or not? That's their business. That's not our business. But we as a church, we're not only a priestly people in which we offer sacrifice to God, in which we offer this, the Mass. But we're also called to be a prophetic people. We're called to be a witness for Christ in our world today. In fact, if you insert your name into that first reading from our letter to Ezekiel, listen to what it has to say. So you, insert your name. I have made you a guard for the church of St. Peter. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out or warn or dissuade the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity. But I will hold you responsible for their death. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways and they refuse to do, and they refuse or do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Pretty strong words, pretty harsh words, but they're relevant to us today. The clear and practical nature of this message it's even continued in our gospel, where we're told not just what to do, but we're told how to do it. For Christian kindness and Christian forgiveness doesn't mean that we have to be mean to those people. It, mean, it doesn't mean that we have to be harsh to those people. But it means that we carry out our responsibility with a loving and charitable kindness. 
It goes on to tell us, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when, two, when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. And the passage recommends a procedure in these three stages to approach our defaulting brother or sister in person. Many times we think, oh, it'll be much easier if I just write them a letter. But letters have done so much damage. They are misinterpreted. The person who reads that letter might read something into it which we didn't even mean to say. But the church clearly gives us some advice. Go to the person yourself. Invite them back. And then it goes on to say, if a, pri if a private and personal meeting fails of its purpose, we're told to go a second time, accompanied by one or two trusted companions. And the purpose is not meant to be a way of pro uh, proving to someone that they have done something wrong. But it's meant to help that process. It's meant to help them to reconcile with the church. And then it goes on to say, if they don't reconcile, bring the case before the local church. To us, that might seem like a daunting process or a daunting procedure to go that far. But guess what? Nine out of ten times, if you try that first procedure, if you invite that person back, they're more than happy to come back. They realize the truth. They want the truth in their lives. But are we holding up to our responsibility? Are we doing our job? As good listeners of that word of God today, as good hearers of his word, the next step for us is now to go and to put those words into practice. Those words to Ezekiel, they weren't just for him, they're for all of us. Are we actually doing our job? How happy it would be to bring one person back in fact, it even says in Scripture, there's more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. Are we willing to do our job? Are we willing to put into practice what that old book has to say, that old book that holds a lot of wisdom? <laughs>